welcome age of vintage society. Despite her remarkable accomplishments, Mayo Metho remains ambiguous and enigmatic to many. When she is recalled, it's mostly as the erstwhile tricky alcoholic wife of screen star Humphrey Bogart. Yet a closer analysis shows Mayo's uneven life of astonishing achievement and shattered promise like the entertainment industry, a gorgeous facade with plenty of melancholy. It's also unfair to consign Mayo Metho's legacy to that of a boozy floozy. She exemplifies talent early in her career and later strengthens what some see as the then slumbering abilities of her more famed husband. Why Mayo Metho threatened Humphrey Bogart with a gun? Make sure to watch the video until the end and leave your thoughts in the comments. If you're new here, join our wonderful community by subscribing to the Age of Vintage channel. Mayo Metho, the youngest star of classic era. Mayo Metho's attainment on stage and screen initiates long before she encounters Humphrey Bogart. After years on the stage, child star Mayo Metho gets national attention, getting a chance to meet the president in the White House. Mayo's next big opportunity hurls her to the lights of Broadway. As movies swap the attractiveness of theatre, many actors don't make an effective jump from the silent films or stage to the next big thing, talkies. Mayo's credible stage experience, enhanced acting skills and developed communication ability helps her successfully conversion to roles in this new part of film. She ultimately acts with plenty of other celebrities of the screen, including future husband Humphrey Bogart, plus Betty Davis and James Cagney. Long absence from the story of Mayo Metho is answers to important yet seldom asked questions. This includes topics like why Mayo and Bogey wed in the first place and an evaluation of the powder keg dynamics impacting their link. Respected viewers credit Mayo with facilitating to make Humphrey Bogart the household legend he remains today. This directly opposes the popular notion that Mayo had only a bad effect on Bogart's career and life. Mayo Metho and Humphrey Bogart shared an excellently emotional relationship. As a result, many are now aware of Mayo's documented jealous tempers and excessive drinking. This also helps to elucidate why Mayo remains a convenient culprit for Bogart's unhappiness, at least until he leaves her to get married to Lauren Bacall. But there is a lot more to the story from those in a state to know. Is the marriage between Mayo and Bogart wedded delight? Hardly, but in addition to witness accounts confirming Mayo's significant positive effects on her husband, some of Bogart's finest acts occur while he's married to Mayo, further highlighting her positive influences to the life and career of Humphrey Bogart. Concerning the chemistry between Humphrey Bogart and Mayo, one eyewitness noted, I think he found her amusing. She made him laugh a lot, and Bogey liked to laugh. But the whole thing changed when Bogart met a husky blonde, who was 25 years his junior on the stage of the 1944 film To Have and Have Not. During filming, Bogart stopped Bacall at her preview to say goodnight when he suddenly propped over, raised her chin and kissed, the New York Times stated. Despite a blooming romance, the outlet reported Bogart went back to Metho many times before realising his relationship couldn't be saved. Bogart and Bacall had fallen in love for each other and both couldn't hide the epic romance. In 1945, Metho and Bogart finally separated. In the same year, Bogart married Bacall. They stayed together till his death in 1957. She kept a low profile, he said. There wasn't much news about her whereabouts and I think that's how she wanted it. But Bogart was unable to forget Metho, whose death was endorsed to acute alcoholism. He would go on to put flowers on her grave until he died from cancer in 1957, age 57. In a different time, Matho could have rebounded in California or returned to her theatre roots in New York, but the media inquiry and her age both presented it very difficult for her to break free again and start anew. She couldn't go back to a production that basically labelled her negatively. Mayo Jane Matho was born in 1904 in Chicago, and the acting germ bit her timely and hard. 
While living in Portland, Oregon, she acted in her first theatre production when she was just five years old. Her father, a rough sea captain and mother, a journalist, were slightly surprised at the girl's energy, but tried to be helpful. However, there were dusky things going on in the household. As Matho grew up into a precociously stunning young girl, men started to gaze over her and take notice, and her father, who fought with his rage all his life, was none too delighted. Anger or not, Matho had her vision set on the megastars before she was even out of school. She admired figures like renowned French celebrity Sarah Bernhardt, and as she got parts in even more prominent productions, audiences called her the Portland Rosebud and the youngest leading lady in the world. She even once presented a bouquet of floras to President Woodrow Wilson. Doing so well at an early age has its advantages, but many teen stars have also gone on to clatter and burn. Little did Matho's admirers know that the similar fate awaited their young star. So many things came too much fast for Matho, and that involved romance. When she was still a teen, she started acting full-time for a theatre company and then earned a part in a series of film shorts. That's when the whole thing changed. While on set, she encountered the handsome trooper and cameraman Jack Lamond and quickly fell head over heels in love with him. This was not a worthy thing. Over the way of just days and weeks, Matho and Lamond dove into a tumultuous affair, despite the point that Matho was only 17 years old and Lamond was in his twenties. Nor did this age dissimilarity stop them from doing somewhat even more rash. Bare months after meeting in September 1921, they got married, and then soon after that moved to New York. While in New York, Matho set up the lights of Broadway. Her 1923 act in The Mad Honeymoon was around the only thing criticisers did like about the show and her aptitude to rise above the material with the utter force of her star power mesmerised all the right people. One day off stage after a performance, a very imperative man approached Matho. The man who found Matho that night was none other than popular producer-playwright George M. Cohen, who was at that time setting together the song and dance man. Cohen decided that Matho, who he supposed as the next Lillian Gish, was perfect for the main role in his production. By 1927, to almost no one's wonder, Matho and Lamond filed for divorce only six years after their marriage, and that's when Matho made a dreadful concession. In the paperwork, she appealed that Lamond had isolated her a full two years before, right about when she was performing footsie with George Cohen. Now Matho was again single. In 1930, Matho fixed which way the wind was driving in cinema and went from New York to Los Angeles, where scores of screen segments were hers for the taking. At first it got rewarded. She instantly got her first big talking film role in Corsair. Stardom appeared within her reach at long last, and Matho rapidly altered her bedroom life to match. Now come to the marriage of Matho and Bogart. Bogart's marriage to Matho is an example. They got married in 1938, and within a few months, their relationship was defined in the media by naming the pair the Battling Bogarts. Both were substantial drinkers. Drinking was part of Bogarts on an off-screen routine, and in his wife's case, psychological illness was worsened by the alcohol, as well as her view of her husband's confirmed cheating, which was mainly untrue, at least at first. A severely annoyed Bogart once showed a guest a supply of inner doors kept in the basement of his house, ready alternates for those damaged by one of the blissful couples. Bogart named his precious yacht at the time Sluggy, in decency of his wife, who was very often referred to with the same title in the press. Matho once threatened Bogart with a gun at a dinner party before several horrified witnesses, though she was enchanted without shots being fired up. After numerous goodbyes and reconciliations, the pair separated in 1944. During one period of reconciliation, Bogart informed the media that he was revisiting their home. In other words, we'll return to our normal battles. Finally, Matho filed for divorce on May 10, 1945 in a Las Vegas court. The divorce was approved one hour after she filed the verdict. Within a few days, Bogart married Lauren Bacall on May 21, 1945. 
After the divorce, Matho withdrew from the public eye for some months and spent a long time at the Malabar Farm State Park, the location of Bogart and Bakul's marriage. In August 1945, Matho tried to resume a theatre career in New York. However, she was not able to start her career in a way that she had given up and became trapped in a habit of alcoholism and depression. In the late 1940s, she went back to Oregon, where her mother facilitated care of her. Matho's story is far away from neat, but how many people featured on Broadway got a great chance in Hollywood and then tied the knot with one of the most significant actors in history? Maya Matho did all of that and much more, but the truth that she died young, the truth that she had divorces, the truth that she had problematic alcoholism, yes, those are all facts. But if you take just a step back and recognise everything she did achieve, there's surely a story that hasn't been spoken enough. Matho got her chance on Broadway as both a performer and singer during the Roaring Twenties. The University of Oregon pooled. The Oregon inhabitant even made her splendid debut on stage before she learned to deliver, Portland Monthly added. The Oregonian greeted her as the youngest leading lady in the world and was commonly mentioned in local outlets for her distinctive talent. After performing for about a dozen productions, she went to Hollywood in the 1930s and began her career with Warner Brothers Studios. Matho performed in 28 films, usually as a blunt broad or the other woman. By the time Mayo Matho met Bogart during the shooting of 1937's Marked Woman, together with Betty Davis, she had previously been married twice. First from 1921 until 1927 to the cinematographer John M. Lamond, then from 1931 until 1937 to Percy T. Morgan Jr. One of the things that fascinate Bogart Mayo immediately was the fact that Mayo could make him laugh. They had spent a very good time together. Every time you saw them, they were enjoying themselves. But they were obsessive about more than only each other. It was no top secret that by this point the two relished hitting the bottle for a lot of good times. Although Metho was officially the bigger Hollywood star at the time, she decided to leave acting just two years after her marriage. To the media, Metho professed that in her extremely hectic filming timetable, she'd overlooked how much she adored being home and keeping house. The fact, however, might be much blacker. For Metho, the same sense of pleasure wasn't in the greetings card for her. She was now in her forties. At that age, you weren't in a condition to get good parts in Hollywood as a former actress. And my research recommends that there may have been a certain kind of blacklisting involved. By this time, Bogart was a dominant star in Hollywood, and I consider there was tension in between. Probably didn't want to be allied with somebody like her at this stage of life. She did get several offers, but not the kind of good quality roles women of her age range would be offered today. In 1943, everything got to a bone-chilling apex. During yet another fight between them, Matho endeavoured to take her own life. Distressingly, this wasn't the first time she'd attempted. She had cut her wrists in the middle of a fight on several previous occasions. But it was so dangerous this go-around that Bogart insisted she sees a psychiatrist. His demand opened up a necessary but awful Pandora's box. When Matho finally met with a professional, the psychiatrist gave the Bogarts upsetting news. He diagnosed Mayo with paranoid schizophrenia. In other words, Matho could be suffering from psychosis, mistakes, outbursts and hallucinations that at least partly described her erratic conduct with Bogart, especially when joined with her drinking habit. In the end, there was a scientific name and cause for Matho's mental difficulties. But it didn't take to her recovery, just the opposite. Matho ultimately moved back to her native Oregon to be near her mother. According to the information, it was Matho expended her final years to be near the bank, withdrawal from the alcohol, and escape the press scrutiny after her open divorce. Matho's last on-screen role was 1940's Brother Rat and a Baby, where she acted as a girl on the bus, and she didn't desire to play another criminal girlfriend. By the end of her life, she needed a fresh start, and it was evident that Hollywood wasn't going to give to her another chance. But at the end of the day, Matho decided to go back to Oregon, where she could have some peace again. Mayo Matho died on June 9, 1951, at Holiday Park Hospital, Portland. 
Though the press at the time stated that Matho died during an unnamed surgery, her actual cause of death was accredited to acute alcoholism. Matho left her worth, totaling $50,000 and equivalent to $500,538 in 2022, to her mother Evelyn. Additionally, she presented her library of classic books to the Catlin Gable School, her alma mater, as well as scholarship funding for the institution. In short, Mayo Metho's life was full of legendary achievements and timely mishaps. She died at a very young age, but created a long-term value in the hearts of viewers. Metho's remains are entombed at the Portland Memorial Mausoleum in the Selwood neighborhood of Portland, Oregon, together with her parents. Bogart continually sent flowers to her grave until his death. Her ending is an extremely sad one but her life wasn't all calamity and drama. This is a lady who lived a full, ironic life and made her name both in Broadway and Hollywood, an unbelievable accomplishment for her star. Her life was more like a fairy tale, and I consider that's what makes her all the more fascinating. If you liked this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up, subscribe if you are new here, and if you want to support my work, please visit my Patreon page. You will have noticed by now how common it was, and perhaps still is, that the problematic behaviour of Hollywood stars is actually caused by a mental illness. You should definitely watch this video and see how Patty Duke's undiagnosed mental illness made her life terrible.